Welcome to another episode of In Range. I'm here to talk to you today about zeroing the AK family of rifles, whether it's an AKM, an AK-74, or something else chambered in 5.56. As long as it has traditional AK sights, these instructions that I'm going to provide you today will apply. There's been some discussion going around that the AK is not truly a zeroable weapon, and that is, of course, nonsense. You do require a tool or tools to modify the windage zero on the AK, and you do require uh, a tool or some creativity to modify the elevation zero, but these weapons are absolutely designed to be zeroed. In fact, if you think back to American history, the M16 and M16A1, and the M16A2 for that matter, technically require a tool to modify the elevation zero, which is done at the front sight base, and the M16 family of weapons does the winded zero at the rear, but the original M16 and M16A1 at a minimum, a bullet tip, but realistically a tool to modify winded zero on that as well. The AK family of weapons, all zeroing is done at the front post. No zeroing is done with the rear sight whatsoever. So if someone says they're zeroing the gun by moving this slider, they don't know what they're doing. Same goes with the M16 series of weapons. If people say they are doing their elevation zero by turning the drum in the rear, they don't know what they're doing. The elevation zero is done on the front sight post. So, with an AK, the big difference is the winded zero is something that is mechanical, and once you set it, you forget it, and you don't mess with it again. The elevation zero is more easily adjustable in the field. In fact, the cleaning kit comes with a tool to do that. I'll show you that later in the video. But realistically, once the weapon zeroed, it should be left alone, and all that is done is the rear sight is essentially set to the elevation or environment in which you expect to be shooting at targets. So let me go ahead and get in on the front sight post of the AK because that's where all the zeroing action happens. We'll talk about the tools that you could or need using to do that sort of zeroing. And then once you've zeroed it, you should be good to go and you don't ever touch it again. So this is my AKM and you can see it's rather beat up. We're gonna get to that in a minute. This is the cleaning kit. We're gonna get to that more in a minute as well. But this is the tool I recommend. This is the Magnematic. Once you have this, you have this for life. And this works to zero any AK variant, whether it's an AKM, AK-74, anything else, even an SKS, and it is built to last. This thing works. It gives you the ability to adjust winded zero and elevation zero right there. This is designed to fit the front sight post, and we'll get to that in a minute. But this is the best one. Now, there are military tools or even cheap ones you can get that work maybe once and then tend to bend out of shape. You can use them, but this is the best one. You do need either something like this to adjust the elevation on the front sight post, or you can, in a pinch, use needle nose pliers. It's kind of hard to do. Lastly, but leastly, if you don't have this tool and you need to adjust windage, there is the old hammer and punch. And you literally would use the punch on the drum and you would hit it. And you're gonna hit it with force. The point is to move the drum left and right. I'm gonna talk about which way to move it when we talk about zeroing. And now there is the actual AK cleaning kit. And in the cleaning kit, proving that the gun was designed to be zeroable, is this little tool right here. And that right there might look a lot like this, because guess what? That is designed to modify the, or turn the front sight post for elevation windage. The actual cleaning kit itself has a little spot you can stick it into. And that is your wrench. You can also put it in here. And then you turn either counterclockwise to change the impact one way or clockwise to change it another. But this is in the cleaning kit and is designed for you to be able to change elevation zero on your front sight post in the field should you need to with the tube being used as the wrench. So there it is. Let's go ahead and focus in on the front sight post and I'm gonna show you with the magnetic tool how this actually works. So this is the AK front sight post. This is the windage drum. This is the actual sight front sight and this is the post you will turn to modify elevation zero. So what you're going to do is you're gonna set up at 25 meters with the sights unmodified. You're gonna set your rear sight to the number one, like that. And you're going to get a six o'clock hold, meaning you're going to, if I prefer a six o'clock hold, you might want center of mass. Six o'clock holds when you have a little line of white under what you're aiming at. I think that's better with iron sights. Fire three rounds, see where they group on the target. If they hit on the left side of the target and you need to move impact right, you will make the front sight move in the direction of where the bullets hit. So as a rule of thumb, if you wanna move your windage right with your rear sight, you move your rear sight right. 
So you move the rear sight the direction you want the bullets to move. You move the front sight in the opposite direction of where you want the bullets to impact. Essentially you're tra tracking, or essentially following the impacts with the front sight to get it zero. So let's say all of your impacts are left. That means you need to move your front sight left to reflect that. And that's where this tool comes in, because what you got to do is push this drum to the left. Tighten it down. It's essentially a clamp. It's a vise. And once it all lines up, you'll see that the tool is impacting the drum. And you turn this forcefully, and in the process of turning that forcefully, you will move the drum in the front sight base to the left. In fact, you can see on mine, it is a little to the left. And you will push the entire sight assembly, not the, not this frame, but the sight itself, meaning the post and this drum, left, reflecting where the bullets impacted on the target. Then fire again. Keep doing that until you get a winded zero. Once you have your winded zero done, you now need to modify your elevation zero. Now, your elevation zero is modified by moving the front sight post up or down. And that's this tool as well. So, let's unscrew this just to make it easier. And this right here will go right onto the front sight post. Like this. Like that. You turn it clockwise to make the front sight go down, meaning you're going to raise the impact. And then you turn it counterclockwise to make the front sight go up, meaning you're going to lower the impact. So if your bullets were hitting high, you would go counterclockwise and you would make the front sight post rise to be where the sights hit. If the bullets were low, you would turn the tool clockwise to lower the front sight to again reflect where the bullets are hitting and make the impact go up. So by modifying the, the drum, left or right, you get your windage. And by modifying the front sight up or down, you get your elevation. That's it. That's how this works. Okay, so you've done this all at 25 meters, but really you need to confirm at the distance of your rear sight, which is 100 meters. Now, if you don't have a 100 meter range, do it at 50 meters. But if you can do it at 100 meters, do it at 100 meters. Now do the same thing you just did, fire, let's say a five round group at 100 meters. And if you need to, once again, modify the windage and elevation to make sure that the one reflects where you want it to hit at 100 meters. Once you've got that done, this rear sight leaf is calibrated for the cartridge that the gun is designed for. So this is 7.62 by 39, so you'd have 200 meters, 300 meters, 400 meters, etc. And then there's a battle sight zero back here, which according to Soviet doctrine says that this rifle will now allow you to hit a man-sized target from essentially 100 to 400 meters. Um, a lot of people say this is a directly equivalent to the 300 setting. I don't agree with that. I also don't care for the battle side zero because I'm never shooting an AK past, let's say, 300 yards. It's just the AKM, 7.62 by 39, hitting anything past 300 meters is quite challenging. So with the AKM, my preference, this is not doctrine, is to leave it at 100 and not bother. So once I have a good 100 meter zero, I leave this alone. My windage is set at the front sight, and I leave this here. If I happen to know a known distance, and I'm going to try to shoot at 400, yeah, I'll set it to 400. For all normal engagements, I prefer to have it set to 100, which gives me a better, let's say, plus or minus elevation for targets from 100 to 300 meters. I find this to be a little too gross of an adjustment. Let's take the look at the same rear life, rear sight leaf on the AK-74. So first off, you might notice that not all AKs are created equal, and my front sight post is all the way to the left on this. You can see that that drum all the way to the left. And that has to do with how well the rear sight and front sight align when they're building the gun. This is an arsenal gun, and it's hit and miss. Even high-end quality AKs have this problem intermittently. Sometimes your front sight will be all the way to the left or right. It just is what it is. You just leave it alone, you learn to deal with it. However, what I want to talk about is on the AK-74, because of 545, I do things a little differently with my rear sight. Now, this is not doctrine. This is not some official military doctrine. I don't want you to take it as that. This is how I deal with it. I zero, personally, because 545 has a traject a very flat trajectory compared to 762 by 39 once I'm zeroed, I leave it at 200, which is similar to what you do with 556 with the 50 slash 200 zero. And I leave that at 200 and essentially never mess with it. Because at 200, 545 
makes it quite capable and easy to hit targets from 100 to 400 meters, even with standard AK iron sights. Yes, you heard me right. I think 762 by 39 is pretty much effective to 300. You can make hits past 300, I'm not saying you can't, but with leaving this at two on the rear leaf with an AK-74 and 545, I can relatively easily hit a man side target out to 400 meters. Now, if I have a known distance and I want to dial it in, I'm still zeroed appropriately to do that. So here's 500, for example. And you can do the battle side zero thing as well, but also, I don't care for this. Once again, I like to leave the AK-74 and 545 set to two, and I would do the same thing with a gun shaper in 556 for the same reasons. But what I want to talk about is the differences in using the rear sight leaf with 762 by 39 versus 545 or 556, and also that sometimes your front sight's gonna look like that. So in conclusion, you can see that the AK is a very zeroable rifle. If anyone tells you otherwise, you should question their expertise. It's just different than the American way of thinking, although not that different. The M16 and M16A1 are practically roughly equivalent in terms of the idea that they are zeroed and forgotten and not really adjustable in the field. The M16A2, of course, brings a very different mindset to the table. However, they still should be zeroed and forgotten. They should just be adjusted for windage or elevation for the conditions you're dealing with. Once again, the rear sight is where you do your elevation adjustment for known distant targets once you have your zero. And I recommend, it's not doctrine, I recommend you leave your AKM at 100 meters for all engagements from 100 to 300. And I recommend you leave your 545 74 at 200 meters for all of your engagements from essentially 100 to 400 meters. However, that doesn't change the fact that you can still use the battle sight zero and you can set it for known distance by setting it to the number indicated on the rear sight leaf based on the cartridge and gun you're using. Hopefully you found this interesting and insightful and if you're trying new iron sight zero one of your AKs, hopefully this will be a good instructional video to do so. Once again, I recommend the Magnematic tool from Midway USA. You can use the actual cleaning kit that came with the gun for elevation and you can use a hammer and a punch for windage if you don't want to buy that tool. Obviously do all of your zeroing from a stable firing position and confirm it at the known distance. If you like this kind of content, please consider supporting me on Patreon. InRange is completely viewer supported. We have no sponsors, no overlords, no one provided these guns. This is all my stuff and all my equipment that have been purchased by viewers like you to make it possible to do content like this. You can find me at patreon.com slash inrange tv. If you can't, totally understand, plus just help me with the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel, make a comment below, and share with your friends. Thanks for watching.